So welcome to Port-au-Prince in, in Haiti. It's a sunny day, but there is a lot of misery outside. It's cold. It's the third day of the, uh, the earthquake. It's the 15th of January today. And what we are going to do together today is to, uh, as you know, divide you up in groups, uh, UN, the local population, the, uh, the international NGOs, the military, and so on. You, you have all the information. And we're going to um, simulate not so much the response, because that would be impossible, but we want to know from you what you would do in, in a situation like that. What are your priorities and how are you going to present those priorities? The title of the simulation, Preparedness and Response, and as Jules pointed out, we're not going to be focusing much upon the response, except to the extent that the preparedness situation or the lack of it is going to affect clearly your response options. So what you are being tasked with essentially is going from recognizing what it is in fact you're dealing with to anticipating options for responding to it down the road or for allocating resources or for informing donors or your constituencies, your friends back home, whatever. You have to construct a reality which is an operational reality on the basis of your particular group. Liberate yourself from your comfort zones and think of this situation in the best possible outcome, no matter how theoretical it might be. That's, a, that's an intellectual and emotional e exercise which, I'm, which we're challenging you with. You are functioning in a situation where time is of the essence where understanding of with your colleagues is essential, you don't have the luxury of any kind of personal indulgence. When I first heard about the Haiti earthquake, and I'll end with this observation, it struck me that I would choose Haiti as the place for the perfect storm. Putting together a framework of action within that environment, even making sense of it to the outside world, has been and will prove to be, as you look at it more closely from different perspectives, an enormous challenge. And then everybody will make a list of the assets, yeah. and then this list of assets, we will try to bring it to somebody that that's a different topic. Yeah. How do we bring it that's to the international community? That's we'll objective see. too. Exactly. Yeah. That is the responsibility of the government. Who releases information on a timely basis. Yeah, but they cannot. The government is gone. We Are go. we looking at the... Uh, the ideal setting, how we want it to be, or the reality on the ground? The reality, the reality on the ground. Okay, yeah. let's, let's list out all the assets that we think. But Warehouse, then you talk like about travel. Yeah. So this is, to make just a list like yeah. this is very easy. Yeah. We try to call the representative of these sectors. How are you going to call people together? That, that's, think about that. Telephone, no? Really? No telephone. No telephone. He's saying no telephone. Yeah. yeah, you can do it parallel. But for me, the biggest priority is to save lives. Mm -hmm. I tell you, in a situation like this, when water supply, food supply is not working, no, but and the law and order because is not there. Currently, the other thing is that I mean, deciding what are we here to do. Mm -hmm. Not forgetting the fact that we are not one military, we are different exactly, militaries. Yeah. You're asking the central question. You're a military commander from the U.S. You're a military commander from Brazil. You arrive on day three or day four. The first thing you want to know is who's in charge? What are my priorities? And if you think about what are the military strengths? Setting up communication networks, mm -hmm. setting up logistic networks and so forth. So you might decide to prioritize, okay, I'm gonna do what I'm doing best. And while all of these other things are being developed in parallel, and I'll leave you with one dilemma. Mm -hmm.